Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here, and welcome to this episode of The Passion Point. This is the show where we follow passionistas around the world who are making a living doing what they love. Imagine that. That would be something I'm sure most of us out there that are hearing would like to be able to do, make a living doing what they love. And today, we don't have not just an amazing guest, but she's the woman to help you do and make your passion allow you to create an income. So without further ado, I'm going to make a, just a short little introduction to Jody Harris. Jody is an inventor, an author, a speaker, a business consultant, and a publisher. Um, and wow, and that's, that's really cool what you're doing with your publishing. Um, she's invented Zipped Me, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's a very a necessary, cool tool that every woman on this planet should have. Yuck Be Gone, we'll talk about that as well, and is affiliated with another pro pro product called Great Stripper. Uh, she spoke on many stages. In fact, that's how we met when you came out to California. You spoke on a Northern California stage, um, and, and she speaks on both the West and the East Coast. And one of her passions include publishing, where she makes the author's dreams come true. And I just love that about you. And, and Jody, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing fabulous, Karen. Thank you so much. You are an amazing woman. Um, I have followed you for a couple of years, and let me tell you, wow, I'm impressed. And and the caliber of uh, guests that you have on your show, wow, it's just fantastic. Thank oh. you for having me on this morning. Thank you, and thank you for some of the caliber of the guests because you have been a, a veritable resource for me. So I want to uh, publicly thank you. This woman knows people. She knows people. And she thank knows you. a lot of really great people as well. So, you know, we like to start the show with a, a, a short definition of passion. So I'm going to start with Webster's. Webster's Dictionary says... The passion is an intense driving or overmastering feeling or conviction. Even saying those words, I get like this, conviction. What does passion mean to you, Jody? Passion means living my dream every day, helping others. That, that is my passion. That, that's where I shine. That's where I enjoy my life. If I am not making either my dreams or other people's dreams happen, um, it's not a good day for me. And, and it's really, truly a passion and a desire of mine that I have. Well, and I've been stalking you for a couple of years, ever since we met. I've been stalking you, and I only say that in the nicest of ways. And the reason why, though, is that you're not just a talker, you're a doer. And when you say that your passion is to help others and, to, you know, just your, your whole thing, you really mean that. You don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk. And we're going to tell your story today. Let's, let's go way, way back, maybe not all the way back to in utero, but maybe way, way back to when you decided that this is the journey you wanted to get on. I know you have a story. I know you have a why, a huge why. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey? You know, um, I was a teenage mom, and um, I found myself in a domestic abuse relationship. Uh, it took a lot of grit. Um, I didn't have a lot of people in my corner at that time. Um, they were disappointed in me. And I really had to dig deep. And because of my children, I am where I am today. Um, I saw three little faces that needed someone, and they depended on me. And I was not going to let them down. And fast forward, I've been in corporate America over 25 years. I absolutely love what I do. Um, but then I found myself in a hotel room about five years ago, and I couldn't sit up my dress, and I almost felt like a damn soul in distress. So after walking out in the hall and asking a nice stranger to zip up my dress, um, he looked at me and he said, you know what? He said, somebody would invent something to zip up these dresses. He said, that'd be a, a millionaire. And that was my aha moment. And um, I came home. I talked to my kids about it, and I, I started going out and finding the pieces that I need and putting together a prototype, you know, but again, my why, which you mentioned, um, it was very important to me to give back to single moms, stay-at-home moms, because I know how hard it was. If I could have had a job to make an extra $40 a week to buy diapers or formula, and I mean, that's 20-something years ago. Yeah. I would have loved it. And so I am giving back by giving young women um, an opportunity to make the zip and, and I get more joy out of that than actually selling the product. I know it should be uh, the other way around. And because of our dedication, we've been in the top 1% on Amazon and sales. 
that uh, just that alone and I, I know that we it's hard to equate our success based upon just our sales but high five I mean that that yeah. is that is awesome that's not easy to do and we're not talking about freebie stuff out there that goes to bestseller and then, and then we pretend like we are bestseller this is this is real this is real yeah. bestseller and and you you have done something that I would assume and, and we could talk about this when you said you were going to do this did you have a bunch of people that were in your circle that said oh yeah Jody sure go ahead you're, you're really you're going to do that or did you have supportive individuals that said go Jody go no I had Jody right behind me pushing me every bit of the way and my kids are a huge encouragement um, my fiance dark um, he was a huge encouragement and said you know what anything you put your mind to you can do and so because of the dam I stepped out and I you know I've always been on the financing side I, I understand balance sheets income statements um, and I can make deals happen on that side but now I had to transfer that to my personal life because now I'm an entrepreneur and I had to look at my budget I had to come up with my own funding. You know, one thing I didn't want to go into debt because right. um, I have dreams. I have dreams of where I want to be in 10, 20 years. And, and I don't want this debt over my head. So it has taken me a while. And I think that's very important for your listeners to understand. It takes a while. Um, it took me two years to develop a relationship um, with someone who's affiliated with the Amazon and to get my product on, on there and then to get the sales. It didn't happen overnight. So it's a journey. It's a process. And, and I think it's also important for your listeners to understand um, you're going to get discouraged. Who doesn't get discouraged? But you know what? You have to go back to your why, the reason why you want to do this, and you need to keep going. You know, those days that you've had five no's in a row, you need to keep going because that sixth one could be a yes. I totally agree with you. I don't know if you're familiar with a book called Go For No, Andrea Waltz. She's a good friend of mine. And her the whole concept behind what they talk about is you fail your way to success. And that mm -hmm. the more no's you're getting, you're also proportionately you're going to get more yeses. So if you know that you that when you do cold calls or when you go out and you do sales and you know that for every 10 calls or every 10 meetings you sell one, well, mm -hmm. it, just by, you know, simple math, and you know, math is your thing and numbers are your thing, just by the simple math, if you know with 10 calls you're going to get one sale, well, then do 20. Do 20 calls because mm -hmm. you're going to get a second sale. And it's all about being consistent and it's failing your way to success. And when I read this book, when I first got into business, uh, it was it was mind blowing for me. First of all, it was done as a story. The, the book is really, it's like, I don't know, 36 pages, 40 pages, and it's done in a story form. And it's about failing your way to success. So you, not, you, are, you are basically the, exact, the best example. You are not an overnight sensation. And anyone out there that thinks, that Jody's an overnight sensation or that I am or people that you look up to and you go, oh, they must have done, I've talked with my hands too, apparently. They were um, an overnight sensation. Not not so much, not so much. So you you did um, the Zip Me and basically it allows women to what? Zip up their dress that zips up in the back. And I've also designed it so it can help elderly people either zip up their pants or zip up their boots. So, you know, it really has multiple purposes. And then you went into a second product. I did. I did. I'm part of a barbecue team, a competition barbecue team, and we have a great time. And I promise you, I don't look like this when I'm barbecuing. <laughs> you know, that's, that's another thing I really want your uh, listeners to know. You know, I'm real. There's days that my hair don't look like this. There's days my makeup isn't on, but that's okay. You know, I'm a real person. But anyway, I love to barbecue. Um, Three Hog Night Smokers just actually won our first grand championship. A couple of years. And, you know, because I travel for the barbecue competitions, because I travel personally, um, out promoting my products, and then I also still travel for corporate America, I got tired of dirty uh, toilet seats when I went to the restrooms and airports, restaurants, um, you name it. I probably have ran, ran into 10 dirty toilet seats this week. It, it's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. So I came home and I started working on some formulas and I formulated um, a formula that is non-toxic. So if my granddaughter happens to get a hold of it and drink it, 
I don't have to call poison control. I know she's going to be okay. Uh, but then you spray it on the toilet seats. It instantly sanitizes. You wipe off the excess, and you're good to go. Wow. And the name is Yuck Be Gone. And everybody goes, Jody, why'd you name it that? And I said, because that's what it is. It's yuck. It's yucky, yucky, yucky. So <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That's so that's product number two. And I know that you are also involved in a third product. And it yes. was specifically came out of your barbecue, which by the way, I just want to come visit you just to have barbecue. I, I oh, come on. You're winning all sorts of competitions. So that was an aside. But you have another product that actually goes along line with that particular thing that you do, the barbecue thing. Yes, a, another powerful team, Amu to Sui. Um, that's the name of their team. Um, the inventor actually is one of their pit masters that came up with this wonderful tool called, called the Great Stripper. And after you barbecue or even cook out, um, you know, you got gross stuff left on your grill that you need to clean. So Joe has actually invented a tool where you scrape um, the grills and cleans them. And we are getting very close to releasing that to the market. I'll be one of your first first buyers. <laughs> we were going to barbecue last night, and my husband said, "Ugh, I have to clean the grill." Yes, I have to clean the grill. And for those of you who barbecue, you know it's kind of it's, it's yucky. I mean, it's just ugh. And if you yes. live, if you don't live in a huge house with a big backyard where you can take it outside and do that whole thing, it's a problem. So it, it really is. It really is, and it's very important. There are some grills um, that are coated that our tool will not work on, but all of the grills that we typically are associated with, um, they're real still. So this works perfectly and actually look, makes them look brand new. So. I, can't, I can't wait to see the product. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to you talk, Jody, and it's, it's clear you have um, a mind that doesn't stop. So a problem arises, I have to fix it, I'm gonna create yeah. something. And that is a, a particular kind of mindset. I don't think everybody out there can just simply say, oh, there's a problem, I'm gonna go create something. There's a skill set that's involved. But what everyone can do it's the, is the mindset aspect of it. Yes. That is, you know, figure out what your own why is and how you're going to create either a product, a service, or just do something that will help yourself and then therefore others, right? I mean, you don't, you're not solving problems just for yourself. You know that if you have the problem, others probably do too, right? That's right. Um, I've been called the queen of problem solving and I actually, I love it. I love it. Um, and the one thing that's very dear to me is there are so many problems out there, whether we look at our personal life or if we look at our corporate life or if we just actually look at problems with our children. There are so many problems that we can solve. First thing I look at is can I solve it? And second thing is will it matter in five years? And if I answer yes and yes, then I, I move forward. If I don't, then I might back away and look, and look at some other things. Well, it's, you know, and I think I want to really focus right now on the problem solving aspect of what you do, but in general, entrepreneurs, because mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs, if we are not solving a problem, mm -hmm. it's probably um, clear that your business is not thriving as much as it probably could. Would you agree with that statement? Oh, yes. Yes, I would. I would. And that leads me into um, when I became an author. I didn't know I was going to become an author. And I have to admit, I was pretty hesitant about sharing my story. Um, and one thing that I realized is the process that I had to go through to be an author. Um, I really wanted to change that. So what I have done, and you have alluded to, is I went out and formed my own publishing business. And the reason why is because I want to give back to the authors it's their story. They have lived it, and they have a right to promote it out. And so um, basically, I have published 365 Affirmations to Smile by Kelly Clanton, Stone Benches, Understanding the Visible Footprints of Dementia by Judith Inglesby, which um, this week has reached the top 100 books in Australia and South Africa. Wow, wow. And then I have another exciting uh, book that will be coming out very soon about a brilliant lady um, that lives in Texas. And, and I really can't give out too many details, but be looking at it. She has a remarkable story. She's a 38-year-old single mom that has Parkinson's. Wow. And 
she just became an American Ninja Warrior. Wow. Oh I know. My gosh. My gosh. You, you know some of the most fascinating people. Fascinating people. Jody, I, you know, I'm wondering, when I know that people, you meet a lot of people on your travels. You travel back and forth across the coast. You're doing your speaking engagements. You're going to be out here in a couple of months. Yeah. And I'm hoping yeah. that I see you then. Uh, when yeah. you're here. What do you tell people that come to you that say either I've lost my passion or I don't have a clue as to what my passion is? They might be, as I call them, accidental entrepreneurs, uh, people that lost their job, were laid off, uh, downsized, and now they don't have a job. So instead of saying I'm unemployed, they say I'm an entrepreneur because it makes them feel better. But what do you tell them if they don't know what to do next? All they've been doing is one thing, and now they're pushed into this environment, either on purpose or by their own purposeness, that they decided to be the entrepreneur. How do they decide what to do? Is it the problem thing? Is it solving a problem? Or is it, what do you tell them? You know what, Karen, that's a great question. And I have been in those valleys where I'm like, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I doing all this craziness? I give back by, I tell them, first thing I tell them, I don't care if you're a man or a woman or you're a kid, I love you. And because I love you, I'm invested in you. So now let's go back and let's look at your why. Why did you start this? What is your passion? And you know what? Typically after about a five, 10 minute conversation, they're re-energized. And you know, when I look back, it's all about encouragement. You know, I grew up in a, in a uh, generation where we, and especially having a very strong uh, independent mother from German descent, you just got the job done. There was no praise. There was no encouragement, which I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That, that made me to the woman I am. But I also had a father who's very compassionate that when I did achieve my goals, he gave me that encouragement. So I think it's great to have an encourager. I think it's great to have someone that is driven. Um, that can help you get things done. And sometimes, you know, I, I do consult, but sometimes it's just picking up the phone and saying, hey, I haven't heard from you lately. What's going on? Are you okay? And that's not a business call. That's a friendship call. That is saying, you know what? Remind me what your why is. Remind me what your goal, and I'm going to push you there. And, and, you know, Karen, I hear a lot of times, oh, Jody, you tell everybody you love them. Well, I kind of do, so, um, and I don't even care if you don't like me. I still love you, so get over it. So, you know, it's being, <laughs> um, letting people understand that I'm real, because like I said, I'm going to a barbecue competition in two days. I'm not going to look like this. You're probably going to see me in a ball cap, or you're probably going to see my hair a little crazy, no lipstick on, but I'm real. You know, you can touch me. Um, you can see me when I'm having coffee and sometimes on stage I forget where I'm going with the story, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. You it's are okay. who you are. And, and that is what comes shining through. Every time I talk with you, it is so clear that you are exactly who you say you are. There are no airs that you put on. You do love everyone and it's That's clear right. that you do. It's not just something that you say. And I think that, that um, when you do that, you really give that little oomph that people need, maybe mm -hmm. take that next step because somebody believes in them. And maybe by you believing in them, maybe they themselves will start to have the belief that they can yeah. do it. Yes, it, exactly. Well, I, I, you know, we spoke briefly about um, uh, earlier that you're, you're considering doing an event coming up in the future. Yes, yes, yes. It, it's on my planning board that I need that I want to do an event. Um, and I'm very excited about it because like I've told you, I love giving back. I want to give a book or put a book out um, that has value that teaches you some business thing. Now, some business ideas and techniques. Now, I'm not going to tell you that these business techniques and ideas are not new. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for people to understand that the things that you experience in your daily life, you can apply to a business and you can make it work. So that's the aspect that I'm going to use. There will be a little bit of tidbits that people have might never heard before, but those are going to be in there. But then the last chapter is going to be the key because the last chapter is where I get back. I'm actually going to give people an opportunity to come pitch to me and my team that I assemble. Um, 
for five thousand dollars seed money to help them start their business. Wow. Yeah. And now, how soon is that going to be coming up? Because I know I'm, we've got viewers who are going to be saying, "Wait, wait! I, I need to take notes now. When is this <laughs> happening?" <laughs> well, um, I, you know, I'm not perfect, as I said earlier, um, and I have just went through um, a diagnosis with my mother. Um, through uh, for Alzheimer's. So I really thought that the book would be out in April. It didn't happen. My goal um, is to have it out by October. Um, and I'm really going to try to stick to that. But I want your listeners to understand that if there's a crisis with my mother, I'm going to put my energy back there. And then I'll come back to the book and back to the conference. And they can, they can always stay in touch with you via your website, <laughs> jodyharrisinc.com. So that yeah. will also be in the run sheet, guys. And, you know, so if you forget what we just said, which when you're, you know, my age, older than dirt, you do forget <laughs> something. So you're going to want to go check that run sheet. And you know what, Jody, we will update it. As, as we get closer, I'll go back to the show and we'll make sure that people n know how to um, connect with you. Now let's talk about barbecue. I mean, because it barbecues where it's at. So you're, yes. on a bar you're on a barbecue team. Yes, yes. And you're and winning awards. Yes, we are winning awards. And we have something very exciting happen over Memorial Day weekend. KCBS, um, which is the organization um, that we cook under, and Bass Pro Shop has invited us to be. Um, they're cookers for the day. And I can't announce it, but in May, look on my website um, because we're there's going to be some additional products that are going to be available there. So uh, Three Hog Night Smokers is really going into some different areas, and I'm very excited about it. So how, how do you do it all? I mean, as a whether you're a man or a woman entrepreneur, it, it takes over your whole life. I mean, this is not something you wake up and decide to work today, but maybe not yesterday, and, unless that's how you set up your business. You know, so many people go to nine to five and, and then they go home. As entrepreneurs, it is not always easier to be an entrepreneur. In many respects, it's probably one of the hardest jobs you're ever gonna have, but one of the most enjoyable ones because it's something that you love. But as an entrepreneur, I don't know about you, I work seven days a week. 24 hours. I mean, I will, we're doing this interview at a particular time. You are on the East Coast. I'm here on the West Coast. And we're doing this at a very early time here in California because, you know, that you do things when it makes sense for yeah. who you're doing things with. Yeah. You found it a challenge. You, you are in corporate America, but you also are doing the entrepreneur thing. So what's the difference for you? You know what? Um, I think it's my personality. Um, I read something the other day that says um, your brain can only handle 10 minutes of, of stimulation, basically. And so every, and my attention span is only good for 10 minutes. So, um, you know, after 10 minutes, I'm looking for another stimulant. And that's usually where I, my brain is turning and I'm already starting to focus on other projects. Um, so it comes natural. To me some days but some days I need to disconnect and release and I need my downtime and you know what that's probably probably with my comfy clothes on sitting on the couch um, looking at some TV shows that I like to watch and it's not because that stimulates my brain but it relaxes me or sometimes it's out in a recliner on the front porch and we've got a pretty wooden recliner out there that I sit in and it's just listening to nature um, but I find myself being very easily stimulated um, with projects that I have going on and moving forward and then also caring about people. You know, when I get that phone call from um, that woman that says, I can't do this anymore. I've got three kids and I'm struggling. Right. Well, that stimulates me because that's my compassion that comes in. Or I have that person who calls me and says, hey, Judy, I've got this product. I want to do A, B, and C. You know, how do I get started? Great. Let's do it. So, you know, it, it's really a balance. And people are going to look at me and say, no, how are you balancing it all? It is a balance for me because I know when I need my downtime. Um, I know when I need my brain stimulated. And it just really all works together for me. And it's funny that you said that I had um, a guy actually call me and said, okay, we want to know whatever drug you're on, um, whatever vitamins you're taking, whatever pop you're drinking, because we're going to put you out there and promote it. And I was like, oh, I don't have anything. I said, I said maybe, 
<laughs> yeah, maybe it's something in my mind, but I don't know. But, you know, I find that ironic that people keep looking at me and they're like, she's on a stimulant. Um, she's taking something to, to make her life better. And, and it's not. It, it's just it's just being real and being in the day and enjoying what you do. And then being real again and realizing, hey, I, I, I need to step back for, for a little bit. And knowing it's okay to step back. Well, uh, you know, as I, I listen to you talk, I am thoroughly motivated to get my mojo on today because, as you know, you you don't you don't just talk the talk. I mean, it, it's very clear you walk the walk. But what's also very clear to me, and I think what what holds you so dear in my my heart and my thoughts, is that you do show up in service, and that is at the. That really is, at least when I look at you and I listen to you talk and I hear about what you're doing, that is your motivating factor. You want to serve. End of story. And however it's going to manifest itself, more the better. Because from service comes everything else. It's about creating the relationship. It's about creating that interaction. It's about creating not just for the now, but for the long term. Would you yeah. agree? Oh, I do agree. And and that leads me to a wonderful story. Um, there was a young lady that is paralyzed that's in a wheelchair. And she found out about my Yet Be Gone product. And um, I, I knew her finances were, were tight. I sent her some Yet Be Gone and said, here, just try it. Because the one thing she told me when she called me, she says, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm paralyzed from, I believe it's her chest down. She says, I've got to get pretty intimate with toilet seats. And after she used the product, she felt good. She was even able to use it on her hands afterwards. And she says, you know what? She says, because of you, you're changing my life. Where now I can go out in public and I can start making a difference. And guess what? She's now an entrepreneur. She makes beautiful um Oh, they're not Hallmark cards, but you know what I mean. She she designs them and paints them and puts the things in them. And here she's an entrepreneur. So it all started because of a product, because she needed it. And now she's becoming an entrepreneur. And you've made the difference for her. Now, she had to take the action, but you made the difference for her. And that has to be very, very powerful. And I, I hope that our viewers hear the power in what Jody just said. It, she heard, listened, and responded to a problem, and everything else came from them. Right, and Karen, it's not me. It, it's not me. It, it is this young lady. It is her bravery to step out. Now she told me she can go shopping. She doesn't feel bad going to, the, to a restaurant because she has um, something in her tool chest to take care of her personal needs. Right. And so it's, it's all about her. I mean, I'm encouraged. Um, I went to a trade show about six months ago and she was there and I was so excited just, just by a little part that I could play in her life. It is changing her life. Oh, it is. I mean, absolutely. It is her who did the work, but you yeah. were there to help her as she took that next step. And that's, that's really powerful. And I know for me, when I do that, when I'm able to just provide just a little something to allow that person to take the next step. That's what I'm in this business for. That's what I'm in business for, period. And that is to be of service. Any last things you'd like to share with our audience? I mean, you do so many things. Um, and and I, I know that you've got the event coming. You've got so many things. How can people, first of all, get in touch with you? Should they go to your website? Yes, please go to my website, um, www.jody.com. Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, I-N-C dot com. And I have a few um, contact buttons on there. And please feel free to send me an email. I respond to them quite often. Um, and I think really what I want to leave your listener, listeners with is don't give up. Thanks. Keep moving. Nothing happens overnight. And it's okay to be real. It's okay to show up sometimes um, on your couch and veg out. I think that's a term my kids use, veg out, um, in your sweats. But don't stay there. Get you some rest, come back around, regroup, and then remember your why, what is your passion, and let's start implementing. 
And if you need somebody to kind of push you, give me a call. I'll inspire you all day. Um, like my kids say when they have friends that come around, um, they're like, oh, you know, we don't get along with my mother very well or my parents and my kids say, oh, here, here's my mother's number, call her. She'll just love you to death, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if that's a great thing or a bad thing. No, but I think it's great that your kids respect and love you enough that they want to share you with others because you have made such um, uh, an impact on their lives. I think that's awesome. I know, I know your daughter's an entrepreneur. She's, she's doing, and she's, she does not, the apple does not fall far from the tree. She's a beautiful young woman, and she's doing her thing. And I just think what you instill in the people around you is powerful. So if you have not yet met Jody in person and, and you already see her personality coming out in this interview, please reach out to her. She loves making new friends. She loves getting to know individuals. And who knows, you may have something inside of you that Jody can help you nurture and bring out as well. So again, we encourage you to go visit Jody on her website, www.jodyharrisinc.com. You don't have to remember that. Just look directly below. That link will be there. Click on it. Go say hi to Jody. Jody, thank you so much for being on the show today. You rock. I just love how real you are, and I'm hoping I will see you in a few weeks when you're here visiting my neck of the woods. Yes, thank you, Karen, so much. You're a fabulous woman, and thank oh. you for this wonderful interview. I had a great time today. I'm delighted that you were here. Have a great day, everyone. We know that you have a choice as to how you spend your time. We want to thank you for spending time with us today. We so appreciate it. And we'll see you next week on the next episode of The Passion Point. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.